and welcome to Christ Church on this Sunday, the seventh Sunday after Pentecost. Worship would not be the same without each and one of you here, and we're so glad to see you. Our service for Holy Eucharist Rite 2 begins on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. saying together, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal, that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Hosea. When the Lord first spoke through Hosea, the Lord said to Hosea, Go, take for yourself a wife of whoredom and have children of whoredom. For the land commits great whoredom by forsaking the Lord. So he went and took Gomer, daughter of Deblain, and she conceived and bore him a son. And the Lord said to him, Name him Jezreel, for in a little while I will punish the house of Jehu for the blood of Jezreel, and I will put an end to the kingdom of the house of Israel. On that day, I will break the bow, the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. She conceived again and bore a daughter. Then the Lord said to him, Name her Lohurema, for I will no longer have pity on the house of Israel or forgive them, but I will have pity on the house of Judah, and I will save them by the Lord their God. I will not save them by bow or by sword or by war or by horses or by horsemen. When she had weaned Lohurema, she conceived and bore a son. Then the Lord said, 
Name him Lo am I, for you are not my people, and I am not your God. Yet the number of the people of Israel shall be like the sand of the sea, which can be neither measured nor numbered. And in the place where it was said to them, you are not my people, it shall be said to them, children of the living God, the word of the Lord. Our psalm is Psalm 85, if you'd read responsively by half verse. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people. You have withdrawn all your fury. Restore us then, O God, our Savior. Will you be displeased with us forever? Will you not give us life again? Show us your mercy, O Lord. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying. Truly, his salvation is very near to those who fear him. Mercy and truth have met together. Truth shall spring up from the earth. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity. Righteousness shall go before him. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. As you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to elemental spirits of the universe, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have come to fullness in him, who is the head of every ruler and authority. In him also you were circumcised with a spiritual circumcision, putting off the body of the flesh in the circumcision of Christ. When you were buried with him in baptism, you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God, who raised him from the dead. And when you were dead in trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive together with him when he forgave us all our trespasses, erasing the record that stood against us with its legal demands. He set this aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and made a public example of them, triumphing over them with it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us, and do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, Do not bother me. The door has already been locked, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give, give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. This past May, a young woman named Elizabeth Bunker gave the commencement speech at Rollins College as the valedictorian of her class. What made this commencement speech so unique is that Elizabeth has non-speaking autism. She hasn't spoken since she was 15 months old. Yet her fellow four valedictorians unanimously voted to have her give the commencement address. Her speech was given through a speaking device connected to her computer. But technology was only a small part of what made that day possible. What helped Elizabeth to unlock her beautiful mind from its silent cage was the love and compassion of her parents, her peers, and her teachers, who worked with her over the years to help her with her daily needs and to teach her to type and to communicate in spite of her challenges. Unable to so much as tie her own shoes or button her own shirt without assistance, she could very easily have been marginalized and without a voice. Even typing on her device requires a communication partner to hold the keyboard while she types with one finger. As a child, when she first learned to express herself through typing, she used the word agony to express what it had been like being unable to communicate with others, locked in the silence of her own mind. She wrote poetry to express herself once she was able to use this tool to communicate. And in one of those poems, she wrote, 
Oh, don't you know I'm trying to find a way to show you who I am? Because of the compassion and assistance of others, the will to overcome and her faith in God, she's not only been given a voice, but she's been able to accomplish exceedingly abundantly beyond what anyone would have ever thought possible. Elizabeth graduated from Rollins with a degree in social innovation, and she's already founded her own nonprofit organization called Communication for All that works to provide access to communication and education to non-speakers with autism so that they might be able to live meaningful lives. In her commencement address, Elizabeth called her classmates to a life of service, reminding them that a favorite Rollins graduate, Mr. Rogers, used to carry a scrap of paper in his wallet that says, Life is for service. She said it is that principle of service to others that gives meaning to our own lives and to those we serve. It was that commitment to service that created the kind of community in which someone facing the kind of challenges faced by Elizabeth could thrive. Service is life in relationship with others. It's giving back to others because we are so grateful for all that has been given to us. We're called to live in relationship with God and with one another. Jesus said the greatest commandment is this, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength and to love your neighbor as yourself. The model of prayer that Jesus has given us in the Lord's Prayer is a call to live in relationship with God and with one another. It's a call to root our lives in a loving relationship with God, trusting God in all things and loving others with the same kind of love that God has loved us. It's a longing for the principles of God's kingdom in heaven to be manifest on earth so that all might know the wholeness and fullness of life that can be possible only through a relationship with God. It's a love that tears down the walls that separate us through the power of forgiveness, a love that doesn't hold grudges or allow wrongs against us to take root, but rather forgives and moves past them to another way of living. It's a love that sees the worth in others and seeks to live as a blessing to others so that they too might know the love and grace of God in their own lives. It's a love that realizes that serving the Lord by serving others is the greatest privilege we're given and a calling we all share as we live in relationship with our Heavenly Father. The prophet Hosea was told by God to take an unfaithful, to say the least, wife as an illustration of the unfaithfulness of the people of God who were living according to their own selfish passions and desires running after other gods, and failing to live in a faithful relationship with the Lord. Hosea was to love her with that same unconditional love that God loved his unfaithful, undeserving people. The hurt and brokenness in her life and in their marriage was a reminder to the people to return to living in a faithful relationship with God so they could have that abundance of life they so longed for. The promised land that the people were given by God that was meant to be living in paradise on earth was not about the place as much as it was about being in relationship with the giver. 
When our lives are rooted in relationship with God, all things are possible. The gift that comes through prayer is the gift of God's Holy Spirit, unlocking for us the kingdom of God within and empowering us to operate in God's kingdom as a blessing to those we serve in his name. Communication is at the heart of any healthy relationship. Prayer is the way we communicate with God and the way we're able to listen as God communicates with us. Prayer unlocks our ability to know and to love God. It transforms our character to be like the character of Christ, giving us the selflessness and compassion we need to be the kind of community we're called to be as the body of Christ. Prayer gives us strength to persevere in the face of overwhelming obstacles that would tempt us to be discouraged and give up. Prayer reminds us we are loved, that we're chosen by God for a purpose, that we are people of great worth. Indeed, God so loves us that he has paid the price for our redemption in the death of his one and only son, Jesus Christ, on the cross. Jesus did not leave the promise of the good that God longs to give us in general terms. He said he will give us the Holy Spirit. The gift of the Holy Spirit accomplishes change for good even in seemingly impossible circumstances. The Holy Spirit accomplishes healing of mind, body, and spirit brings forth life in the wilderness, gives us guidance, wisdom, knowledge beyond our own, and understanding. The Holy Spirit strengthens, empowers, and equips us to accomplish God's purpose in us and in the world around us. The Holy Spirit brings the presence of God into a situation and transforms it to align with God's will. All of this is what we're saying, what we're praying for when we pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. We are living in the age of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit didn't go away after Pentecost, but continues to be poured out upon and within believers. The Lord had made this promise to pour out his spirit on all people long before the coming of Christ. He said in Ezekiel 36, a new heart I will give you and a new spirit I will put within you. And I will take out of you, uh, out of your flesh, the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful to observe my ordinances. You shall dwell in the land which I, shall, which I gave to your father, and you shall be my people, and I will be your God. And I will deliver you from all your uncleanness. A little further along in that promise, the Lord says something important. Not that the rest isn't important, but that we don't want to miss. As harsh as it sounds, he says, it's not for your sake I will act. But this isn't actually an unloving statement, but rather one that is supremely loving. You see, God is not encouraging us to be selfish or self-serving, but to desire more of God out of our love for God and our desire to serve God more effectively as his people. God is accomplishing his purpose in us so that we might have the incredible blessing of living according to his purposes and to be a blessing to others. Those to whom much is given, much is required. 
We are blessed to be a blessing to others. We've been successfully called into a relationship with God so that we might call others into that incredible blessing of living in relationship with God and being able to communicate with the living God through prayer. I see in you, the people of Christ Church, the love and compassion of God in Jesus Christ. You are truly a people with a heart for God and a heart to serve him by serving others. But don't ever be satisfied as if we have done enough. I say that not to burden you, but to call you to a greater blessing. Jesus said to seek God and keep on seeking. Ask for more of God's Holy Spirit and keep on asking. Knock on the door of heaven, longing to know God more and keep on knocking. This is literally what the original translation says that's lost in the English. Be persistent in prayer. Be relentless in your longing to know God more and be unwavering in your desire to serve others in his name. For truly it is in giving that we receive. It is in forgiving others that we are forgiven and it is in dying to self that we are born to all the fullness and glory of eternal life in the presence of God. Amen. Standing as able, let us reaffirm together our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 358. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people are on form four on page 388 in the Book of Common Prayer and in the insert. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, 
that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation, especially those on our parish prayer list, Alice, Anne, Bailey, Bebe, Bruce, Elizabeth, Gary, George, Griffin, Helen, James, Jay, Jenny, John, Joy, Katie, Kelly, Ken, Laura, Lawrence, Libby, Luke, Malcolm, Marcello, Margaret, Matthew, Meg, Merritt, Nancy, Pammy, Pete, Phil, Phyllis, Rodney, Ronnie, Ruth, Thomas, Tommy, and Walter. We pray too for those serving in the military, especially Austin, Cameron, Charlie, George, Georgia, Joe, John, and Rose. Let us pray for the children, families, and staff of the Appleton Free to Read Summer Program. Please add your own prayers, either silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, including Herkley and Juanita Hubbard, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. We remember this day Anne Hughes and Otis Hughes, for whom the altar flowers are given in loving memory and to the glory of God. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand as able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated. Good morning. It's good to be back with you. We are fresh off 
a week at Camp Michael, so Julie and Cecia and I are equal parts exhausted and totally fulfilled. So it's good to be back with you. I know Harry's got an announcement. I'll call your attention to all the announcements in the bulletin. The one of particular interest to me is the pictures for the new directory. I want to see everybody's face and name many, many times. So please, if you haven't already, sign up for those. Uh, those picture taking times will be coming. Uh, there's one in August and then one in September. Lots of good stuff coming down the bend as the summer wraps up and we head into um, school again in the fall. So please take a look at those announcements. Yeah, I have an announcement uh, that did not make it into the bulletin in time. This has been a recent put together, but um, some of you may, may know that there is kind of a conspicuous gap in our involvement and programming for those between EYC and the young families age. Um, I am happy today to announce that this is being addressed. Um, we are going to have an inaugural meeting of a new fellowship group for young adults that will take place next Sunday, July 31st at 4 p.m. at the Society Garden. Uh, this is not a Bible study or prayer group. This is solely intended to bring together the young adults of this church uh, in fellowship and help us to get to know one another. Uh, if you're wondering who counts as a young adult, um, there are, this, this is for those who are, who are college, college aged, who might be home for the summer um, before they head back off and for those who will be home you know, during the various parts of the school year, for those of us who are young professionals, and for those who are young at heart. <laughs> um, this is not you know, for a bunch of 20-year-olds. Um, this is for, for all of us um, you know, who have not yet entered the, the settled, stable, perhaps, uh, era of life. Um, so bring your partner, bring your spouse, bring your friends. Please leave the kids at home. Um, if you, everyone who is eligible on Realm, as far as, as I know, should have already received an invitation uh, via email, but I know that all of us don't check Realm very often. Some of us may not check our email as often as we should, and some of us might not be on Realm at all. So if that's the case and you're interested in this group, please feel free to see me after the service and I'll make sure that we get your contact information and that you're added to the roles for this event. Um, I will be back next Sunday to remind everyone before the event, um, but thank you very much. Thank you, Harry. Well done treading that fine line. <laughs> How to say those things. Thank you. Any other announcements? Okay. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. 